All right, so welcome guys. This is uh, my storyboarding workshop. Uh, the purpose of this workshop is to get you guys to understand the importance of storyboarding, as well as maybe some fundamentals of drawing if you don't already have that. So storyboards, how to learn to stop worrying and love the process. So let's just do what anybody does with any word and let's just figure out what it means on Wikipedia. So uh, the definition of storyboarding is uh, drawings of sequences of a film and it's basically like the comic strip of a movie. So I drew these, uh, and these are storyboards of the, have you guys seen the movie Blade Runner 2049? You have? You, you know what scene this is? Oh yeah, with the prostitutes? Or? It's, it's the one where she like bends down and says like, you're a good Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so oh, a very large, very tall woman. Yeah, okay, okay. and you and you kind of see like 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 how like resembles that. Yeah, a little it's bit. Been, it's been a little bit since I've seen it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what's up? You you gonna watch this? I just came in. Take a peek. Gotcha. <laughs> so basically, if you've seen that scene, this is that scene, but broken down into storyboards. So the difference between a storyboard and an animatic is that an animatic is when you take the storyboard and you put it in a video format. Uh, and a storyboard is static. So more like storyboard, why do you even care? What does this even matter? Like, shouldn't we just take our cameras and just start shooting away? Like, why even draw it? It, it just seems like a waste of time. Uh, well, the reason why we do it is so we could prototype. Uh, because if you storyboard scenes, you can figure out where the problems might be and, and, and you could tackle those on the pen and paper side. That way, when you actually have the camera, you can use it to its fullest extent. And you can also estimate the costs of things because you'll realize like, oh, wow, like we're going to need a room that's laid out this way or, oh, we're going to need this or that. And by drawing it out first, you just kind of realize the problems before they happen. And finally, the best part about storyboarding is that it allows for collaboration. So a common misconception is that the director of photography completely controls how the movie looks, whereas storyboarding can help prevent that where if the storyboarder will, will draw out things and then the, the group of people working on the film can agree or disagree on how the certain scene should look before they're actually filmed with the camera. So why should you just listen to me if I'm copying Wikipedia articles? Because that's basically all I've done so far. Uh, well, I have experience making storyboards. Uh, one of our alumnus of this program, uh, Matthew Bilmes, directed this movie Exit and I storyboarded for that. Also, I've been drawing since I was seven, and I think I have a pretty good grasp of how to draw. And finally, uh, this was a teacher that I had last semester, and he did storyboards for advertising agencies, and he gave me a couple tips and tricks as well, and about the importance of it. So what's in a storyboard? Uh, usually it's around eight, it's about four to eight drawings per page, and it's basically like a thumbnail version of, uh, or, or the, or the four to eight drawings on a page, and they can be as small as little tiny thumbnails, or they can be as large as entire index cards. And they're drawn from the script. And the, that is probably the most important part of storyboarding, is that you're taking the screenplay and you're converting that into a visual format and you're drawing what is described. So this is an example from Rick and Morty. This is the actual script line, and then this is the drawing of what it's supposed to be. Uh, storyboarding is kind of like improv, where you're taking what's, what's given to you in the script, and you say yes and, and you add on to that. So you know if you think that the scene would look best if there was a ceiling fan on top, then you draw that in. If you think, uh, a great example of this actually is when I worked on Exit, I drew little uh, eyeglasses on the main girl, and then in the final cut of the film, she's wearing glasses. And so you know, definitely do this if you're drawing with them with index cards, is that if you, if you tack them up on a board, you can really see kind of the transitions of the scenes, and you, know, you can kind of rearrange things and make them more visually appealing. Uh, and then so another important part is that you got to know your, 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 uh, your arrows and your signifiers. And you, which your goal is to, take, uh, to, to draw out film terminology. And an example of this is like these kinds of things. So a lot of times in scripts, you'll hear things like panning to the left. And in a storyboard, you, you, you draw an arrow pointing that way. And panning to the right's like that. Dollying or traveling in, you know, it's represented this way. 
going, traveling back is represented this way, traveling left, traveling right. And um, this, this will be up on the, the drive, so if you ever want to refer to these arrows again, you don't have to memorize these right now. Um, you know, you crane down, crane up, zoom in, zoom back, tilt up, et cetera. And then this last one is basically, if you have like a really complex camera movement, then what you do is you just kind of try to draw the camera movement as best as possible. Uh, and these are some other film terminologies shown. So this is like a close up. Uh, these are establishing shots. Those are like when you have like a big shot of something to kind of establish the setting or, you know, extreme close ups when you get right in someone's face, medium shot. Over the shoulder, you're over that person's shoulder, the point of view, long shot, Dutch angle. So the most and the, and the last and almost most important step is keep it simple, stupid unless you're actually getting paid. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a volunteer club. Uh, you know, like you don't need to make industry quality storyboards because we're not making, I mean, I mean we, at the end of it, it should be industry quality movie, but for all intents and purposes, it's just, you know, a little movie. So it doesn't have to be the, the most crazy thing. And, you know, the whole point of this is for prototyping. It's not for publishing in a magazine or anything like that. It's, it's just for showing what it could be. And so now, are you, are you just self-conscious of your drawing ability? Well, I'm going to show you this little clip. This is the person who I'm self-conscious about whenever I draw. I might have just knocked my mic out. I have my view who was a genius, my view was a genius. Because he was not only an artist with an incredible capacity, but he was very quick. Shh, shh, shh. Yeah, he was superhuman. He was quickly, rapid, incredible. And then I, I could shoot. Shh. Every day we start to shoot at, at, at 8 o'clock we come. We prepare everything, I think, at 9.30 and we start to shoot. I made the picture with drawing. So anyway, that's that. Um, and so this is a, a crash course lesson on how to draw. Uh, this is everything I've learned in the last 15 years in five minutes. So the most important part of drawing is drawing a line. Uh, when you draw, you, where you press harder is going to be darker and larger and thicker. And then where you pull up on the page is going to be smaller and thinner and lighter. And, uh, and yeah, just focus on how much pressure you're using whenever you're drawing. A lot of people will make the mistake of just drawing really hard lines or really soft lines with no variation. Uh, if you want to draw a straight line, draw with your elbow. Actually, try that right now. Grab your pencils and try drawing a line. I want you to try going from like one corner of the page to the other. And 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 so what, your goal is just to like swing with your elbow. Don't don't try to don't try to draw with your wrist. And see how much like straighter your line is than if you use your wrist. You're always using my wrist. Uh, I'm listening to swear. Well, that was straight. Yeah, I, try going for like very long lines because you can, like only with like your elbow can you achieve those really long straight lines. You kind of get what I'm saying, right? Yeah, a little bit. And then, uh, so different utensils will make different results too. That if you use pencils, it's going to have a different effect as using a pen. Uh, everything in the world is four shapes. Uh, cone, a sphere, a cube, and a cylinder. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is kind of the breakdown of what they are. And here's some examples, like a vase, for instance, is really just these four objects. And, and this lampshade is really just a cone plus a sphere and, and a this and a that. A, a human head is kind of just like a big cube sphere. You know, it's, it's not anything more complicated than that. I mean, it kind of is a little more complicated, but at the end of the day, that's really what you should think about. 
Uh, so then once again, though, everything is really just a line that even though I said that this was a, a, a sphere, it's actually just a series of lines. And, you know, you can do things like this where you draw just like a woman out of one line and there's no thing there. Uh, and then even more crazy is that everything is really just a series of values. Um, you know, we only see things because light hits objects. So there's, see, there's no line here. It's really just a gradation of values. And that's what makes, and it's really just the contrast between this gray and this white that makes you see this object. Uh, where, wherever light hits first on an object is gonna be the brightest spot. And wherever light doesn't hit is gonna be the darkest. And different pe textures pick up light differently. Um, and I like to think of shading in terms of cliffs, hills, and valleys. That, uh, you know, uh, a, a cliff is in the sense that like light will hit one side and not hit another. And then a hill is like kind of like a slow gradation like this. And then a valley is just kind of when it's just a similar texture all the way through. Whoops. Perspective. And it's basically the, the idea that all objects are closer. All objects that are closer are larger. And the objects are, that are farther are smaller. And that all objects continue to get smaller until they completely disappear at a vanishing point. And the vanishing points in this image are here and here. Uh, this is color theory, extremely fast. Uh, every color exists on an imaginary color wheel. Uh, so uh, you, there's color combinations that make the best amount of attractive contrast. So for instance, that's blue, orange, green, red, and purple, yellow. Uh, brown is actually just a neutralized red, which means that it's red mixed with green, um, or it's an orange mixed with blue. And that flesh tones are kind of like this red plus yellow plus a little bit of blue and a lot of white. And you add brown depending on the race. And, uh, and then like dark, really dark skinned people um, usually are, have a lot of dark brown and then a lot of reflectance. And then most colors are muddy. So if you take this, uh, Michelangelo, for example, you know, this part, even though it seems super bright, is actually kind of like a dull white. And, and this part is actually just kind of dull. And this is like a dull brown. And these, these colors really kind of look ugly when separated, but when together kind of seem to pop. Uh, so these are the rules of composition. And I say that lightly because composition really depends on what you're trying to, what kind of message you're trying to show. Uh, but basically, the rule of thirds is that you should put objects in, in these areas. And the thirds is referred to like how it's chopped up three ways on each side. Uh, Westerners, us, read from uh, right to left. So as a result, you'll see in a lot of movies that the, the scene will start out somewhere here and kind of end here. Uh, you know, it's always good to have an odd number of subjects, three people in a room or two people plus a big object of some sort. We just, as humans, we seem to be attracted to odd numbers like that. Uh, things that are close to the viewer have thicker lines, uh, greater detail and a lot of contrast, uh, whereas things that are farther away tend to have less of that. The dead center should only be used like 1% of all your drawings because if you put something right in the center, no one's gonna be looking at the rest of the image. And the edge should barely be used because it's, a very, it's very likely that someone's going to miss something. Uh, and basically with composition, the thing to remember is that filmmakers kind of already figure this out. And a lot of movies you'll see kind of seem to follow these rules naturally. And if you just kind of copy scenes from movies when you're drawing, you'll really pick up on composition very fast. Uh, so in review, everything is lines, shapes, shading, and color. Uh, draw accurately instead of symbol drawing. So that means like try your best to draw things realistically, get out of your comfort zone instead of symbol drawing, and that's through using perspective. Um, copy composition from other things, and most importantly, show, don't tell. If, if there's a way that you can show two people getting into an argument rather than just drawing a speech bubble, then that'll communicate the message way better because people like to look at things. People don't like to read. So this is the challenge that I have for you, is that you take your take a sheet of paper, um, just come up with some sort of story, 
and then have something happen on the first image and something happen on the second image, or, or something happen on the first rectangle and something happen in the second rectangle. And uh, I'll give you six minutes to do that, and you know, we'll see how much of this you retained, and I'll give you some critiques, and I'll hand these back to you next time. So yeah, go for it. Oh, don't stress yourself out, dude, because I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. I have, there's a bunch of YouTube tutorials here, so these are like the places to learn how to draw. Drawing does, is not, it is a common misconception that people are born knowing how to draw. You start out knowing how to draw like a little thing, like, like for me, I learned how to draw SpongeBob at age five, and then from there, I just kind of learned a couple more tutorials, and then sooner enough, I was able to draw what I wanted when I wanted, but not well, and then I got a little bit better, and now I'm okay, and I'll probably never be great, and that's just how it is. Uh, so this is how Pixar does their storyboards. All right, so this section I'm just going to skip ahead. Pop quiz, what is this? What are we looking at right now? What is this? Wrong. What is it? It's an animatic because it's in a video format. If you go back like a little, like two seconds, four seconds, five, that's technically a storyboard. So, but anyway. The, the whole video is on YouTube. It's like five minutes. It's really interesting, actually. It's how Pixar makes their movies and probably a big reason why they're so successful. Um, I mean, besides the fact that they have a near monopoly on the market. So these are a bunch of YouTube. Um, this whole presentation is going to be on Google Drive, um, on the on the UConn, UC Film Google Drive. But basically, these are a bunch of YouTube tutorials that I've frequently looked at. And they have a bunch of like good places to start. Um, Especially, I'm going to really point out uh, Proco TV and Mark Criley. Uh, they both do a really good job at teaching, like, um, like this one. Proco does a really good job of teaching the basic fundamentals, and and Mark Criley does a really good job of teaching like comic book arts. And I feel like comics is just a really easy way to start drawing. It's it's less uh, scary as like full blown painting. Um, and then this one's really nice. It's an hour long how to draw comics the Marvel way, and it's got like a 1970s Stanley in it. So. Anyway, that's my storyboarding lesson. I hope you guys had a good time, learned a lot. And uh, yeah, uh, cut the video off here. <laughs>